Welcome, you're listening to Seen From The Inside. I'm your host, Neha Nagandhi. Today in studio with us, we normally feature celebrities who create their own version of social good through their foundations or philanthropy work. But we're going to shift focus today and we're going to focus on the positive youth that are in Atlanta creating their own version of social good and paving a path for others to follow with, by being positive role models in the community. In studio with us, we have Avery Dixon, who is a 16-year-old saxophone player phenom. He is an award-winning saxophone player that has gone on to play at the 22nd Annual Gospel Choice Awards. He has played for Mayor Kasim Reed at the Selma Montgomery Award Ceremony, for the Michelle Obama Community Garden in East Point, Georgia, and many, many others. But really, the story here is he was born at one pound, eight ounces, and many doctors didn't give him a chance to live. But yet, he has persevered and now now he is a positive role model for the community. So I want to welcome Avery to the show. We also have Miss Brianna Brown, who is an 18-year-old recent graduate of Benjamin E. Mays High School. And y'all, this high school in Southwest Atlanta has many many famous alumni, including CeeLo Green, Chili from TLC, Atlanta Councilman Kwanzaa Hall, uh, the person that's running for mayor for Atlanta, Cesar Mitchell, and I can go on and on. But she has graduated from there, ranked number nine in her class, and has earned over $100,000 in scholarship dollars to attend Tuskegee in University in the fall. So want to welcome Brianna and Avery to the studio. You. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Really glad to have you guys here. And later on in the show, in the next segment, we're going to have a band called Anonymous the Band. These are four members of a group that are uh, between the ages of 16 and 20. And they are ranked as Atlanta's number one teen instrumental band. And they've opened for acts like Chrisette Michelle and and, and many others, but you don't want to miss them. They're, they're amazing and their smooth jazz urban sound is going to really blow you away. So they're going to be on later on, but right now we're going to talk to Brianna and Avery about being positive role models and creating their own version of social good. So let's start with you, Brianna. Welcome to the studio. Glad that you're here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're so welcome. So listen, I want to ask you, you graduated from Benjamin E. Mays and you were volunteering with an organization called Urban League of Greater Atlanta. Tell the listeners what this organization is. It is a nonprofit organization. What does it do for the community? Well, the Urban League is basically a pre-collegiate youth empowerment program for un almost underprivileged kids and kids in high school that just need guidance and surveillance, surveillance throughout their years in high school. And these are for boys and girls, mm -hmm. right? right? And it doesn't matter what age you are. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that it helped you during your high school years, but it doesn't want, uh, matter what age you are. Urban League of Greater Atlanta um, accepts you at any age, and they help you, just like Brianna said, um, you know, with, with guidance, with mentorship, with whatever you may need, right, to, to become a productive member of the mm -hmm. community, right? So tell us about some of the things that you did to volunteer with them. Well, I participated in the workshops. I did volunteering, such as going to feed the homeless, which is something I've always wanted to do, but never really had the time to. Um, I did empowerment workshops. I, every, every year we go on this youth summit and I connect with kids all over the country that are also in the Urban League. And it's just great to see kids my age doing, succeeding and achieving their dreams. That's wonderful. So how many years have you been volunteering with them? Um, I went in my 10th grade year, so about three years. So because of your work with the Urban League of Greater Atlanta, you recently won an award through them, their annual Spirit of Leadership Award. So congratulations to you Thank for you. Spin winning that prestigious award. And what was that like to actually, you know, win an award through them? It was really great because I, I, I say it myself, I did really great throughout my high school years. But it was just always, I always got honor roll or just top 10%. And it was great just to get an award for just being myself throughout the program. I was always that person working hard, but I have other people working hard and they got acknowledged. And I was just on the side also doing great, but still not being seen for what I got, hmm. for what 
I will be basically. Yeah. And so it was so, nice to be in the spotlight. Mm -hmm, just yes. for once. Just for once, right? Uh, and now you're moving on to go to college and become a veterinarian. Yes, ma'am. That's wonderful. Yes, I'm good excited. For, good for you. Good for you. So let's switch tables to talk to Avery. Avery, you are a 16-year-old saxophone playing phenom. Really, I had the pleasure to hear you at the Urban League of Greater Atlanta's luncheon event and you literally had me in goosebumps you i've never heard somebody play the way that you play where do you think that comes from um i think it's a god-given gift well i think it's a god-given gift personally but um it still comes with practice and listening to other musicians and just life experiences too so let's talk about that. You touched on a couple of things that I want to kind of expand on. So life experiences, let's talk about that. You were born uh, with what they would consider a, a very premature weight, uh, one pounds, eight ounces, and um, it impacted you in that your vocal cords do not close completely. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and has left you with some other medical ailments as well. But yet, here you are. So what has, what has that taught you about life? Um, it's pretty much taught me that at times life might not be fair, but that it's like a card game. You gotta deal with what you dealt. That's so true. That's so true. It looks like you got dealt the ace card, um, Avery. So now listen. Now, it's because of your vocal cords not closing properly, does that does that help you or hurt you with saxophone playing? Um, it really doesn't do either one. It just like makes my voice sound different. I might not be able to like hold my breath as, as much as like what I like to say normal people. Okay. So yeah. But 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 your saxophone playing is just amazing. What did you say, Brianna? Brianna, yes, you heard was, him play the saxophone playing. player, right? It was great. I, I tried mean, to play the saxophone like that. Right. I mean, really. I mean, I have to tell you guys that he, uh, Avery, and I'm sure you've experienced this before, Avery. But you had people standing up out of their seats. You had people clapping. I mean, I, I, again, I'm sure you've heard all of this before. But you are your talent at 16 years old is just phenomenal, phenomenal. Okay, so let's talk about this. Uh, what do you do to give back to the community? Um, I do quite a lot. Um, this year I'm starting like, I'm trying to get an organization off the ground. Mm -hmm. That's I'm gonna be called a play on words. That's what the organization is gonna be called? Yes. Play on words. So it's like, um, I'm pretty sure you've heard of like statistics where they build jail cells based on second grade reading levels. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to go through elementary schools starting with second grade or first grade. So I'm going to try to tutor kids basically using music as an incentive and try to at least get like as many people as I can to help me out. But it's going to be a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. And so your nonprofit organization is going to go into elementary schools, maybe starting at the first grade, and you know read to these uh, young kids and get them to understand, empower them to read and get them to understand that jails are built at the second grade le reading level. Is that is that the premise of the organization? That's one of the premises, but I want to let them know that knowledge is power. You know, yes, everything is not all about how much money you have or how much you actually have at home, because. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people are letting their surroundings dictate who they are. Mm, so, so true. I gotta try to get them out of that mindset at an early age. Yes. So true. So true. So where did you get that mindset from? Did that come from your mom or where did you get the mindset from? Well, I was um raised in it wasn't really a privileged household because we weren't rich, mm -hmm. at least not materialistically. Mm -hmm. But we were rich in heart. Because mm -hmm. we had family values. There was love, there was support. And um, it's just like, you know, even if you don't even have biological parents, you can have a support system, at least somebody to reach out to, like a neighborhood, even if it's not even the greatest place, there's still support, mm -hmm. even in the most unlikely places, like a diamond in a rough. So where did you get your support from? Was it, was it with your mom and your family, or was it through school, or? It was with my mom and my family because, um, and my neighborhood where I grew up, mm -hmm. even if it wasn't the best place. It's what still, neighborhood did you grow up in? Um, I grew up in um, Cleveland Avenue. Mm -hmm. like, in Atlanta? Yes. Okay. Is that Southwest Atlanta? Yeah, I think so. 
Okay. So it, it was not, um, let's see, the um, softest place to grow up. Mm -hmm. But it definitely did teach you how to like, you know, know your surroundings, know the people you're dealing with, and definitely know yourself. Yes, that's true. Because you, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it all in growing up in that neighborhood. You've seen people go down the wrong path, you know, maybe going down a, a path that's illegal, maybe selling drugs or whatever. And then you've seen people like yourselves that are doing positive things with their lives, right? And right. I think that's important too. That's what you said. You gotta, you gotta understand your surroundings and how to best become the most, the person that you are meant to be, a right. successful, positive, contributing member to the community. Right? Right. And, and then, then, like you just said, give back. Then go back and tell, show others, those younger kids that are five, six, seven years old, you know, coming up, that you, they too can be positive, successful, contributing members to society. Right? right? right. Like, like the path was shown for you. Um, so I want to ask you, you played at the Apollo Theater in right. New York. Tell us what that was like. Well, the first time I played there, I was, um, I think, either 13 or 14. So, so long ago, Avery. Right. I mean, oh my gosh. Yes, okay. So I went into um, the um, green room, and you know, you walk in, it's this big theater. So it's like got at least like 500 to like a thousand seats, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's like two tiers, it's got like the balcony, it's got these like really gaudy looking, um, let's see, box seats. Okay. So these, these are the closest seats to the stage. So. You know, you're going thinking, maybe I'll just sit up there. Yeah? Did, it, did you? Did you? I did get to sit up there, but I, I did not get to sit up there at the same time. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> you realize, okay, now you're going to get on stage, and you're going to perform in front of all these people. So, you got three days of completely sold out old seats. Mm. So, it's a huge crowd of people. And then, you know, I got two left feet, and, you know, they say, we want you to dance. They said that. Yes. So the like, producers of the show. Yeah, the producer. He was like, "Yeah, you gotta get on. You gotta get up there and you gotta entertain the crowd." Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm like, "That's not what I do." But you're, um, you're I'm like, "Listen, win. I'm gonna entertain them by playing the saxophone. Yeah. Just sit down and wait." Right. I'm gonna stand <laughs> here and I'm gonna play. Yeah. No, I did not get the final decision. My mom came along and she was like, "You're not gonna stand there. Uh -huh. You're gonna dance." Uh -huh. And um, luckily there were some dancers actually there. Uh huh. So after they saw that I could not dance for my life, <laughs> like I'm horrible at it. So they're like, they teach me some simple moves and they're like, okay, just try this. Uh -huh. So I get up there and then I try the steps they taught me and it goes well. Oh, okay. So let's see, um, fast forward to the second round. Uh -huh. There's a singer from Barcelona, Spain. Okay. Um, let's say um, she, when she sung, you could hear a pin drop. Wow. So I'm like, okay, I'm done. Yeah? Yeah. You thought you were like, you're finished? This is, right. your, this is your final round? This is my final round, you I'm done. You gotta break out the dance moves here? Yeah, I'm okay. gonna break out those dance moves again, I'm done. Okay. So, I win. You win? Yes. With the dance moves? Right, with the dance moves. Okay. Now, third round, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to, you know, I'm kind of feeling myself, you know. Yeah. Maybe I can dance. Uh -huh. <laughs> I get up there and I make an absolute fool of myself. Oh no. It's like horrible. So one of the security guards on the side of the stage, I get off the stage, I lose. Um, you're not a dancer, man. I'm like, you know what, I want to go home. I want to go home. So oh my goodness. the lesson I learned with all this was, you know, be who you are. Right. And Stay in your lane, that's what I say. Stay right. in your lane. Stay, Stay in your, your lane. lane. Yes. Be yourself yeah. and definitely don't try to change for anyone else. Right. Because what they do is what they do right. and what you do is what you do. Is what you do. Right. Bri yeah, Brianna, do you want to add to this? Like, you got, do you have a story like this that, you know, like where you say stay in your lane, you know? Really where, where I found my confidence and find, you see people who are doing just as great as you, but you don't want to compare yourself to them mm -hmm. because you have to do what you need to do to make yourself great. Right, and, and, and I mean, you have so many inspiring qualities about yourself. Not only are you, are you super smart, you're beautiful, you're talented, you're confident, but what are the things that you want to have others know about you? I want people to know that 
I'm going to come back after college and make a change and help you because right now I'm transitioning to a new life and I'm still learning what I need to do for myself and what I want to do for other people. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I listen, you guys, both Avery and Brianna are such positive youth model role models in Atlanta and I believe that it's gonna be you know not only just for Atlanta for this country I want to thank you so much for coming in studio and talking to us keep doing what you are doing thank you so much thank you for having me welcome back you're listening to seen from the inside I'm your host Neha Nagandhi as I mentioned to you before we have anonymous the band in studio with us joining us right now they are a group that are between the ages of 18 and 20 and they were recently awarded Atlanta's number one teen instrumental band. They've opened for acts like Chrisette Michelle and Najee and other wonderful people as well. But I want to get them to introduce themselves to you. So let's start with you, Xavier. Hi, my name is Xavier Davis. I'm 18 years old. Um, I play keyboard for the band. My name is Lynx DeMichael. I'm a saxophone player and I'm 20 years old. My name is Justice Michael, I'm the drummer and I'm 18 years old and our other member who couldn't be here today is Xavier Jones and he's 18 years old and he plays bass. Awesome! Thank you, thank you all for joining us in the studio today. I'm really glad um, that you are here because what we're going to be talking about today is positive role models, youth role models that are here in Atlanta that are making an impact, right? And I want to talk about what inspired you to join the band, number one, and then why is it important to create social good in our community? So let's start with you, Xavier. Well, um, the thing about us is we, uh, we enjoy our craft. Um, this is a passion for us, and uh, we want to spread that passion to whoever we can reach. Um, because why is that important? Why is that it's, it's important to inspire the next generation of musicians because this, uh, the type of music that we play, jazz, is um, known by most as a, a as a dying dead, breed. Yeah. yeah, right. Like not yeah, a lot of young people, fun. especially people your age, mm -hmm. are listening to this kind of music. And um, and it's the music that we love. It's the music that we grew up with. So we don't want it to die out. We don't want it to become obsolete. Who did you grow up listening to? Uh, well, my dad, most of the Your dad is a, <laughs> your dad's a musician, a yes. jazz musician? Yes, Phil Davis. Oh, that's awesome. Props to Mr. Davis. Yes, go ahead. But who but, um, else did you listen to? Let's see. Basically, uh, a lot of uh, Atlanta musicians um, who were around my dad, uh, Trey Gilbert, Little John Roberts. Um, let's see. More so now, uh, Tony Royster Jr., uh, Shante Khan. Nice. Um, yeah, just a lot of those Atlanta born musicians. So awesome. Now, um, I, I'm going to stay here with you one second. So, in your house, was there a lot of music playing oh, yes. when you were growing up, like all the time? <laughs> all, all the, the time. time. Does anybody sing in your house, or is it all just. Yes, my, uh, my mother sings. Your mother sings? Yes. Okay, that's well, awesome. And my youngest sister, but I guess she got that from my mom. Okay. So we all sing pretty much. You oh you sing? I'm, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I, I was like, uh oh, uh oh, I was about to get you. Oh, no. You're like you're like, no, I'm more of a musician. No. Okay. Just. All right. Uh so Langston, let's switch over to you. Tell us why you wanted to join this band. Let's see, uh, so I guess we were the original members, my myself and my brother. Uh, Who's your brother? Justice. Okay. Justice. Justice. And uh we we just I picked up the sax maybe early, maybe sixth grade, something like that. And uh, we've, we've seen like people, like Xavier said, around the Atlanta uh, community playing like uh, the older, older musicians. So we, were, we, we got inspired by them and we wanted to uh, make our own group. So that's where we started off. Um, and it's just important for us to like, not only inspire people, other musicians younger than us, but just uh, people in general just to have like, you know, good good lives, just being inspired by our music. So that's what we're trying to do. So now, did you grow up in a music playing household like Xavier did? Uh, not playing, but they they always played it like on the radio, something like that, on okay. the radio. On so who did you listen to on the so, radio? Let's see, uh, David Sanborn. That was a sax player that we listened to. Uh, we listened to Morse Day in the Time. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yes. 
Yeah, Michael Jackson, Prince, so yeah. it's Stevie, so it was like uh, old school stuff. Yeah. Yes. Love that. Okay, Justice. Now, okay, you're the younger brother. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. So, what's your what's the story about why you play jazz music? Um, I guess it's all I've been around, and I've been playing drums since I was three. So, like, it's been in the household forever. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you didn't want to play hip hop. Right? I mean, I mean, I, I guess that's what I'm wondering. Like, why did you go down the jazz lane instead of like some of the other lanes? Um, really, really because it's like a place where it's like real music. Because now, nowadays, it's mostly like programmed drums. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's, it's like an outlet mm -hmm. for the for us. For you, and then why is it important? Like, if a you know eight year old or nine year old boy or girl come up to you and say, "Hey, I, I really enjoy what you do." You know, is that something that I can do? Like, and what would you say? And why is that important? I would say, go go for it, whatever you're trying to do in the music business. And I'm, I'm I want to like keep real music going. So I would encourage them to do that. Did did you did they have a really good music program at your school? Uh yes, I, I actually went to North Springs Charter um, High School, and we had like a magnet program with the visual and performing arts. So, right, and it was yeah. influential on you. I yeah. mean, you think that if you didn't have such a good music program in your school, maybe you wouldn't be where you are today? Would you say that? Um, I guess, for, for me, I, I was into music like all, like forever, even before the school, so. Would you say that, Xavier? Yeah. Was it, did y'all all go to the same high school? <laughs> oh no, they went to, uh, I mean, we all went to the same middle school. We went to uh, Ridgeview Middle School, um, where we, where we started to get together and play in the jazz band and mm -hmm. in, the, um, in the concert band. Um, that's where the chemistry really started clicking, I mean, between uh, us. But um, it was less it was less the music program itself and more the fact that it was just all of these, these particular members there right. got together and developed such great chemistry. So you guys all met first where, in middle school? Yeah. And, okay, and then you guys kind of all played in the in the middle school band, yeah. or and then and and you were like, we have something here. There's some chemistry. There's something. Yeah. There's this common love, this bond of jazz music. Yeah. Then we need to see what else we can do with this, yeah. right? So, well, tell us about some of the um, ways that you give back. What are some of the organizations that you've played at? Well, let's see. We uh, we've played at the. It's called a. It was a Batterns Woman Shelter, and it's called For Our Daughters. So mm. this was. Uh, by, by one of our uh, people that we played for, we just offered the music up uh, there, and then we also worked with Music Integrity for the Youth. So that's a program where they bring um, uh, professional musicians and younger musicians coming up and uh, try to just expose them to each other and uh, and inspire those who are listening. Also, so that's another one, and we we also worked with the a XQ uh, school bus tour, which is uh, it's for high school like re reinvent. Uh, inventing high school and like the way that uh, it's it's positioned now, they want to have it like more open to uh, arts and all of that. So hmm. that's that's another another program that we helped out with. Uh, but I want to go back to this because it sounds like I mean this is where you all got your start, right? Yeah, in school, and a lot of these schools nowadays are taking away some of the music no. and arts programs, right? And you know, I don't. Can you talk about this a little bit? How important it is to keep the music program in our schools? It's so 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 very important. Um, I think we were the uh, we were the last group of kids to actually have a music program in um, in our elementary schools um, before wow. they before they kind of took them out and made them more private. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember back to the days when I first picked up a, a, a trumpet, you mm -hmm. know, in fourth mm -hmm. grade and how empowered I felt because I, I, could, I could play an instrument, mm -hmm. you know? Um, well, it's a way of um, expressing yourself, yeah, right? Sure. Maybe words don't often do it justice, and, and there's no pun intended here, justice, but, uh, but you know, maybe, you know, because, you know, for a, a fourth grader that's, what, 10 years old, I think, you know, yeah. maybe words don't do you adequate to express yourself, to express your personality, yeah. right? And I think music is a wonderful way to, to, to showcase mm -hmm. that. And that's why it, I, 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 I have an eight-year-old son that goes to elementary school. He's currently um, and he's going to be a rising third grader. And I think it's so important um, that maybe when words don't say what he needs to say, 
then maybe he can do it through music. Would you guys, I know Xavier, you said yes, but what, what, what do you guys think, Justice and Langston? Uh, yeah, that, that's basically what, what I do, <laughs> really. Yeah, that's how you express yourself, is through music? Yes. Right, because it's hard. You're a man of few words, <laughs> right? Langston, what do you think? So Langston is uh, a college student now. He has graduated high school and goes to Wake Forest University. And, you know, do you play in your college band? Or is there a college program? Well, yes. So I, I didn't jump straight into the jazz band freshman year uh, at the school, but I did uh, get in contact with other musicians around the city. Mm -hmm. So we, we've started playing. And I do on Winston-Salem? Winston-Salem. Okay. So uh, we've, we've played at different venues and all of that. And also, I uh, actually brought Anonymous the band up to Wake Forest. So I made an yeah. event up there. And uh, so so we I do get to do a lot of music um, involved things. Um, Open for Ray Schumer, the rapper. I don't know if you guys know, but uh, mm. we did that. La I did that last year, and uh, that was a great experience too. So, well, I think it's awesome that you guys have managed to, um, you know, go on to college, but yet the man, the band has stayed intact. And again, it goes back to these bonds that you guys have because of the music, right? It all goes down to the music, right? Yes. I mean, in the yes. love of it. What did you say? Um, and then who, who? You guys both are graduating or graduated? Xavier, did you guys? Yes. Uh, it, me, uh, Xavier, and Justice have all graduated. Okay, and so you're going on to college now? Yes. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to Hampton University. Hampton University, yay! <laughs> okay, and you? Um, I'm going to the University of Miami. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll find your voice there for sure. Right? Right? Yep. University of Miami. Awesome. I'm really glad. This is great. This is great. Congratulations to all of you. These are all wonderful, wonderful colleges. So listen, I, you know, we have time for a couple of more questions, but I really want to talk to you about what do you guys want to do after you get out of college and, you know, do you want to continue to give back or do you want, what's, what's the plan? What's the goal? Well, after I graduate, uh, I probably want to come back to Atlanta, uh, mm -hmm. continue music. I'm, I'm on the pre-med track also, so I'm trying to see what I'm going to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, hopefully we can make like a group again, you know, back in, back in Atlanta when we all come out of college and, uh, and then start gigging hard over here in Atlanta and, and inspire uh, young musicians just how we were uh, inspired. So. That's a great plan. Justice, what are you going to What's your plan? Uh, well, my, my plan is to do the music track in college, so um, basically I want to go on tour and then inspire people with my music that I play. Mm -hmm. And Xavier? Well, um, I'm looking to get into psychology when, mm -hmm. I, uh, when I go to college, and goodness, I'm, I'm not really good with thinking too far ahead mm -hmm. as far as my plans are concerned, so I just like to... Uh, kind of take things as they come. Like if I end up moving back um, after college or coming back to Atlanta after college and then, you know, getting together with the guys again, mm -hmm. that would be certainly welcome. Um, you know, but if I start my own practice in psychology, then that would also be great. But music will always be there. Right. Like music will always be, um, what, whatever I do, music, psychology, or, or what have you, um, it's all for the purpose of inspiring, like I said, the, the next generation. Right. Because, you know, we, and we've touched about upon this, you know, I mean, if, you're, if your work, if your positive role modeling helps these younger generation to learn music and to love this type of music, then jazz will be here forever, right? There is, there'll be no such thing as jazz, you know, being a dying music thing, right? Because we often read about that. And um, I think that it's so important that you guys being as young as you are, that are carrying on this legacy of playing good jazz music and having it be a part of your core, and bonding through it, and then inspiring the next generation to continue to love it, right? Yes. I mean, I, I can't think of a better example than, than you three, or, and I'm sorry we're missing Xavier Squared. I call him Xavier Squared, you know? <laughs> but, you know, that, uh, or, you know and, and, and he, but I think it's really, really important that you guys are here and inspiring our youth to create their own version of social good. You know, whether, whether it's through music or through whatever it is that they love, right? I mean, you would agree, right? They need to find what that is and then create their own version yes. of social good. Okay, so give one last piece of advice to the younger generation. Find what you love and 
pursue it for as long as you can. Oh, I love that. All right. Okay, that was that was Xavier. Go, Langston. What do you got? Work hard. Choose what. Choose your path and stick to it. Love it. All right, Justice. You know where Miami? Uh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I guess believe in yourself and stick to what you stick to what you want to do and stick to your plan. Right. There you go. There you go, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. That was Anonymous, the band. Thank you very, very much. Get more Inside Scoop by following us on social media. On Facebook and Instagram, we're at Seen From The Inside. That's S-E-E-N, From The Inside. On Twitter, we're at Seen From Inside. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Seen From The Inside Talk Show. Stay tuned for more.